most players think there's only one way to put pressure on your opponent, and that is to hit harder than their opponents do. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually make your opponent's life completely miserable without hitting harder, but by making them move more, and that is to open the court with angles and which is true up to very, very high levels, the more you make an opponent run, the more they will potentially outright miss, but they will start to give you lower quality responses that you can then definitely attack. And that is how you put pressure on them. Oh yeah, and by the way, we're also doing drills. Let's start with how you execute an angle shot. And in this video, I'm actually gonna focus more on shorter angles because you're opening the court more that way. And you're not just introducing lateral movement, sideways movement for your opponents. They now also have to move forward. And that combination really is what hmm, makes life really miserable for a lot of people. As with any shot, wherever your racket face is pointing at point of contact, is where the ball's gonna go. So the racket head position, the string position, is what decides where the ball goes. So if I'm just going down the line, my strings are gonna face square on down the line. Now, if I wanna go cross court, and I mean deep through the court, I turn ever so slightly, now my racket face is pointing more this way. So here's where I need you to be careful. You may have heard the cue come around the ball or hit the outside of the ball. And I do have to admit, I used to use that as well. Here's why I stopped using it. I've noticed that especially newer players interpret that cue completely different than more advanced players. Whereas more advanced players know how to actually place the ball, they understand that they have to address the ball in a completely different way with their entire body, the angle with which they're approaching the ball. Newer players, I've noticed, are all of a sudden not changing their body position, but they're trying to do this. So that's why I stopped using this cue, because I think it can be confusing. So here's what you wanna do when you want to create an angle. Yes, you could just simply hit a cross court ball deeper that kind of cuts the singles line before it passes the baseline. But if you want to cause maximum damage, you want that ball short. And to do that, you have to create a whole lot of topspin, really aggressive topspin, because you want the ball to go quickly over the net, but then come down quickly. And ideal would be if you're hitting an angle that of course bounces in, but then cuts the single sideline and the double sideline before it passes the baseline. Because again, that pulls them wide and they have to move forward. And I don't know too many people that like that. You may also notice, because we have to really create lots of heavy topspin, a change in the swing path. So whereas on a regular forehand, cross court or down the line, I might finish over my shoulder or I might finish here over my biceps, you may now see something like this, because that really allows me to brush over the ball quickly, come over the ball quickly, and it really helps here with that steeper part of the swing. Swing path on the backhand, and I think there's a difference between a one-hander and a two-hander. So if I wanna hit as a one-hander, hit extreme angles, I'm gonna come over the ball with a rotation of my forearm here. I'm not gonna drive through and finish all the way over my right shoulder. Now I'm a one-hander, natural one-hander, so two-handers, I find, have a little bit more of a restriction to hit these really flippy cross-court short balls. But again, they will probably not finish over their right shoulder. It will be a little bit more of an abbreviated brush over the ball. Which balls do you need to hit an angle shot? You don't want to take balls where you're very, very far behind the baseline or in the center of the court, because that's really difficult to create that angle. So if you split up your court into thirds, this here is a great area for you to get a ball that you can attack with an angle with your footwork. You're coming diagonally at the ball. Your racket is behind the ball here and when you're then brushing up really quickly, 
The net is fairly close, so it goes over the net quickly, but comes down very quickly because of your topspin. Using angles is just smart play. And if you want to learn more smart plays, I'll suggest that you check out the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app and you just click on the, the new rules of singles 2023 and you'll see high percentage plays all broken down by Will and by Craig. And this is the stuff that you need. You don't always have to hit hard. So check out the Fuzzy Yellow Ball app. After hitting that angle shot and you pulled them out wide and forward, you want to really stay disciplined and not get super greedy. Because once you pull them out wide and they're really moving, they're under pressure, you're probably gonna have a slightly less quality shot that's coming back. Don't go for lines or anything. Don't over hit that. Simply after you move them out into the corner, you're then going into the open court. Do I always have to hit topspin to create those short angles? And the answer is no. I absolutely love to use my backhand slice, a backhand chip basically, to, ooh, that was juicy, to pull them out wide, to move them up. And the benefit of that is the ball sits really low. So now they also have to lift the ball, which makes it slower. You have more time to recover and or to position yourself in a really good spot in the court to then exploit the open court. Another great way to immediately use the angles is to start off with your serve, of course. And you've seen that plenty of times, serve plus one. For instance, for me as a right-hander, I'm going to serve out wide and I'm deliberately aiming a little shorter for my slice serve, right-hander deuce court. So if I were to serve from over here, this is my target. I don't want the ball to necessarily bounce somewhere here. I want the singles line cut, doubles line cut, before it passes the baseline. So take a little bit of pace off and add more spin. Of course, as a right-hander, if you know how to hit a kick serve, that's another great opportunity. You're serving out wide here, and then you have the deuce court wide open. Bonus tip, of course there's exceptions, but for the most part, if you face a lefty, their preferred play is to pull you out wide to your backhand if you're a right-hander, and you can just cheat over a little bit force them to do something that they may not be as comfortable, and that would be going through the middle. And I'm not trying to serve lefty, because, yeah, no. Okay, enough talking, now it's time for drills. Let's go. Short court, angle to angle. And here's where you can start working with your footwork. So instead of just reaching and kind of getting to the outside of the ball just with your arm, you have to get more behind the ball so that your racket head now is squared up properly. All right, and we're trying to go to our partner's target. Obviously you can do the same thing on the backhand side with topspin, but just to show you, we're gonna do that with slices. Oh, that was too close. Here's another fun drill. You're rallying cross court. Again, you can do that on the ad side, of course, as well for backhands. But you're counting as you're rallying and you get one point, your opponent gets one point when they hit a ball into this area that cuts the single sideline before it passes the baseline or two points if they manage to hit a really sharp angle, it passes the singles doubles alley before it passes the baseline. One point. Oh, I think I got two on that one. So you see what we're trying to do. And it is just a way of learning. A, we're seeing which ball lends itself to be hit with an angle and then actually executing it. If you want more exclusive content, check out my Patreon membership because there I'm posting a lot more stuff that I'm not posting anywhere else. And if you're in the Grand Slam level, you're also joining our monthly live coaching call. So lots of perks. Check it out, my Patreon membership.